All right. Well, you guys know that have been watching this show. We've been touting the champagnes of Henriot, and there's a lot of great champagne in the marketplace. You know, I always say there's no bad champagne. Just depends whether you like the house style or not. This is an area of France where they have a very high level of quality. Uh, this is a product that has demand all over the world. Champagne, not necessarily Henriot, but they do sell champagne all over the world. And uh, brands like Veuve Clicquot that they make 20 million bottles of. You know, you can be found now, uh, you know, being sold as lost leaders. One of the great things is being able to sell a great brand like Henrio at one of the best prices in the country. That's one of the reasons why we've gotten behind this champagne house. We have great pricing from them. And hey, you know, every wine they make is fantastic. They only have three really in this market, but we have all three of them in the store at all times. And uh, if you want the Enchantelours, their top wine, their Tete de Cuvée, there's a little bit of 95 vintage available. And there's some 98 vintage Brut also that we'll be getting in shortly. So if you like the champagnes of Henriot, look, look for those. Or just send me an email back and I'm happy to send you pricing on the two wines that we don't have. But uh, <clears throat> we've got a little Brut Souverain to start out. And this is a family that started making champagne in 1808. A lovely toasty brioche spice. Uh, his father was the head of Clicquot, Thomas's father. So he knows what it's like to run a large firm. And one of the things Thomas said was... Uh, you know, this has my name on it. Don't fuck it up. So, uh, you know, very important. And, you know, they make a fair amount of champagne at Henriot, about a million bottles a year. But next to the 20 million bottles of just the yellow label alone of Ruth Clicquot, it seems like a tiny amount. So <clears throat> really, really nice candy ginger, very precise. And uh, um, that's one of the things that I love about Henriot. These wines are not overly uh, toasty. They're not overly sweet, although they do have 8, 10 grams of residual sugar per liter. And there's a new trend in champagne to make completely bone-dry brute, brute zero champagne, which I'm not a big fan of. The acidity is so high in champagne, you need to have that dosage, that sugar to balance it out. This is one of the things I talked to Thomas about, which he was in agreements. I don't know if these guys do any extra dry, no dosage champagnes, but I didn't ask him for one. I have one or two in the store. If you're interested in it, they can make nice food pairings. But to me, if I'm drinking champagne, I want a Brut style that has that dosage to it. And uh, lovely creamy mousse also, one of the, the hallmarks of Henriot Champagne. Uh, this is a wine that's got a lovely feeling on your tongue. And just like great wine, you want to decanter or open up great champagnes. Another thing Thomas and I talked about, you know, we sent somebody to see their champagne house. And one of the things they did while they were there for them was to decanter the Blanc de Blanc, the Pure Chardonnay, and our customers were blown away. They'd never seen that before. But hey, Champagne is a great wine. It's actually a collection of great wines. Another trend in Champagne, grower Champagne, single vineyard Champagnes. Well, the art between Champagne is blending different vineyards together and creating a cuvee that is consistent year in and year out. So we were in agreement on a lot of things. It's amazing, man. Great minds think alike. All right. Well, the rosé, this is an assemblage rather than a saigné. A saigné is when they just bleed off the juice, letting it sit in contact with the skin for a short period of time. Um, they make a still red wine and then blend it with the white wine to make their rosé here. And this is a more difficult way to do it, but uh, it creates a more consistent product. Lovely raspberry and strawberry fruit and um, really nice freshness with this wine also. A hint of maybe mint on the finish there, but a really balanced style and a long finish. And then the Pure Chardonnay, the wine that needed to be decanted. I had this wine in my glass all day. It was even better at the end of the day. A lot of that lovely toasty brioche showing up there. Almonds, fresh sliced foie gras, which I had never you know, associated with champagne before. But Thomas stuck his nose in there and said, do you smell that? And wow, sure enough, it smelled like fresh sliced foie gras, which I love. But a really long finish, an excellent bottle of bubbly. The 100% uh, Chardonnay base per Chardonnay, Brut Souverain. Excellent juice from Henriot. And next up, we've got Harley from Unfind and Unfiltered with a few things from Napa Valley, Orrin Swift.